Hi, my name is Gavin. Um, it's an interesting thing with the advent of all these modern technologies like AI and things like that. The world of technology is changing quite dramatically. Now, for many years, we've always been caught in a sort of a two horse race with operating systems. We've had Windows on one side and then we've had Mac. And both of these um, operating systems, are, everything's, you know, the world's been very centric on them. But it's interesting, in the background, we've always had Linux or Unix floating around and we've had versions of it, but it's never been a hugely popular operating system for like the content created space or the normal everyday use because certain apps are missing, certain things aren't there and terminal lines, you know, command line or whatever it is in terminal, it's a difficult thing to use. But I, I, I honestly think that world's sort of changing quite dramatically. I mean, if you think about it now, we're tied into subscription models with Adobe. Um, which cost every content creator a lot of money every month to, to pay these things out. And, you know, you'll, you'll get into, I need a Mac, I need an M4, I need this, I need this new technology. Now, one of the big uh, things about uh, Linux or Unix is it can run on very old hardware. Um, I've got down here, I've got an old MacBook. Um, I don't know which version it is, it's quite an old one. And I've got Linux, Unix, uh, Linux Mint running on it, and it's like brand new. It does everything and um, it's really, really useful. And then beneath that down there, I've got an old Mac Pro 5.1, which I put on a brand new um, NVIDIA RTX 460 card and it's running, um, it's uh, running Unspot and it's running it incredibly well. So it made me think, obviously we've always, I've always been sort of, you know, geared into buying these machines as an M3 Max macbook pro over here which is my sort of working machine but is you know unix ready or linux ready for, to become your main content creation machine i for me and i have a background in post-production it's becoming a point where i'd say sort of yes so what i'm going to do in this video i'm going to go through you know if you're a content creator that's what you do you you've got certain applications you need you, you've got to remember that that a lot of the things that fluff out operating systems don't actually help you with your work, okay? They've got lights, toys and whistles and things like that that are surround them. Mac is especially known for this kind of stuff. But they don't actually help you do your job. They're there just to embellish the environment. So if you're sort of quite, quite serious about making content and making videos and stuff like that, then you need a clean environment to work in and concentrate and do you know what you need to do in it. And I think that, you know, after... I've had a couple of weeks of doing this. It's really interesting to me that I think you could easily switch over to Unix as your main operating system. One of the one of the main sort of known versions. You've got Zorin, you've got um, Linux Mint, and you've got Unterbund. One of those three, and you can install all the t the tools you need and very good tools to do your content creation and not look back. And once you go down that road, then you're sort of like going to be looking at you've got high power graphics cards you can use nvidia cards for really easy on those three platforms or you could regenerate old hardware intel based obviously you can't touch the m1 max um, but you can build better systems with cheaper hardware that do the job for you you can even like sort of like you know get an old get get um, pc laptops and then use them as content creation machines because a lot of them have nvidia uh, graphics and stuff like that and they're becoming incredibly powerful. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through, um, you know, the various sort of operating system things you can put on as a content creator. And then basically you can, you set up a Unix box for content creation. So first of all, we're going to look at um, a list of the hardware, the, the sort of things that you basically need. Okay, so... Okay, you need word processing. Okay, this is one of the things that you need to use day to day. Now you've got options. You've got LibreOffice, which comes installed, it's free on all the Linux, main Linux installations. So that's great. You've got Word, you've got Word compatibility and all this kind of stuff. You've got uh, Excel spreadsheets in there. You've got, you can do all the stuff you can in Office pretty much. All the stuff you need to do in Office. And obviously on the back of this, you've got Google Docs, which floats in the cloud and is operating system independent, which is very smart which means you can do everything on any machine, much like iCloud sort of does. Um, they try and get you to do it with Office, but with Google Docs, it's much, much better ecosystem and much more interactive. So you've got you know, your paperwork sorted out fundamentally. 
And then let's talk about your video editing. So you shot your material, you, you need to edit it. And, you know, there's only really one place to go on Unix. And it's not a bad place at all. It's a very good place because this package incorporates tons and tons of um, features that you need. And it is basically one of the industry standards for making films, which is DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve goes on to, with a little bit of tweaking, not much. There's a script I'll put on here how to do it onto any of the Unix in main and Unix installations and basically Unix um, installs. And then you've got the full power of Resolve. Now, what Resolve gives you is two extra bits, three extra bits. You've got a great video editing package. You've got a, a world standard, world class color correction toolkit, and you've got Fusion. Now, Fusion is basically does pretty much everything Adobe After Effects does. So you don't need to be looking for Adobe After Effects. You just need to learn Fusion. Now, it's a bit of a quantum leap because Fusion is node based and Adobe After Effects is layer based. But once you make that jump, then I know worked with a lot of people over the years who've gone that way and they never want to go back to Adobe. They never want to go back to that layer because the nodes and the way that it works gives you much more freedom. And then also built into Resolve, you've got Fairlight, which is an amazing video um, audio package. So you've got that all in one thing. So you've pretty much got nearly everything you need for content creation in one go in that package. And But you need other bits maybe, okay? So you've got audio you've got audacity audacity which is a wav editor which you can use to chop up waves and do things that wav files audio files and then you've also got a thing called ardor which is a full-blown doors audio recording suite which is free so you've got the audio side taken care of and now you've got video editing and everything else now further on from that you may want to do graphics now you're looking for a placement for something along the lines of photoshop we've got a thing called gimp um, which is basically a Photoshop replacement, but for open source. And then you've got Inkscape for vectors, and you've got another one called Critter. Critter, I think that's pronunciation, for illustrations. So you've got, and these are all free. Everything I'm talking about here is free, apart from Resolve, which you have to pay for the studio license. However, they do do a free version. There are some limitations with that, but you can sort of get around it in a way. Um, not fully, but you can sort of, um, uh, you can do limited video editing and limited color correction with it. With the full version of Resolve, you get everything. Um, and then you've got, yeah, so these are all free. And I mean, that's the key takeaway from this. You've got all this free software and a free operating system, and you can put it onto your hardware and you can create for nothing. You're not tied to any licenses. Um, and basically you make a one-off payment for the full blown version of Resolve, which I think is 295 or 395, which is a great investment. And then there's no sort of upgrade cost because Blackmagic make a lot of money off their hardware. And it's um, sort of one of those things like very much like the Mac world where you don't pay for the operating system because they're making the money off you for the hardware. With Blackmagic, it's their cameras and all the rest of their equipment. So but that's great for you because, I mean, you don't really need the cameras or even if you do buy a Blackmagic camera, you on all Blackmagic cameras, I believe you get a free version, a full professional version of Resolve. So there you go. I mean, it's really, really interesting. It's a sort of very much a changing world when you can bring old hardware back to life with this stuff. So you've got laptops that can do your email and everything like that. You can do social media. And then there's a smaller side here, gaming. Gaming has come so far on Unix. It's incredible. You've got Steam OS, which is basically a Unix platform that's been built for games. And there's many ways to put this onto these three main versions I've been talking about. Um, Zorin and all that, you can get Steam games running and Steam has a compatibility layer built in called Proton, which allows you to run Windows games on there as well. So you've got your games as well. But I mean, this isn't work, is it? But you've got to have some kind of time off, I suppose, when you're doing your work. But yeah, it's a really interesting environment. And it's one of these things that makes you think when you drop four or five thousand pounds on a high spec Windows machine or a high spec Apple, because that's where everybody wants to go, do you really need to? Do you need to just maybe buy a better graphics card? Okay, put it in your machine and keep the process that you've got and maybe spend less. It's longer term investment. And then you don't need to subscribe to Adobe. I mean, I don't know what the cheapest Adobe subscription is, but then you're tied to these licenses. It's a very much changing world. It's very interesting to me, um, coming from sort of post-production facility where we would invest heavily in all the workstations but we're paying for the operating systems. We're paying for those things on top. We're paying 
in a you know small department of 10 or 20 editors you think about the licensing cost for adobe adobe there where if you were on resolve you paid once and you could do it so resolve really is the sort of critical key for content creators to enable them to sort of break free of a lot of the boundaries so for me like thank you black magic but it allows you to sort of like do what you need to do but do it on a free operating system with other free software so yeah there you go i take a look at some of these things um and and see how you get on anyway thanks for watching